So there's this moment where Jessica suddenly realizes something about her sister. She thinks her sister is kind of sad and unlucky, and then she gets this idea. What's the idea? Well, just wait and see. Jessica, wearing a fancy wedding dress, starts talking to everyone around. She even grabs a microphone. Then she says loudly to all the guests, Does anyone want to marry my sister? She's not super smart, and she's getting older, you know? After saying this, Jessica's sister gives her a sneaky smile. But she doesn't realize how rude Jessica's words are. The room suddenly feels weird, and people start whispering. Some of them look at Jessica with disapproval. But Jessica doesn't notice any of this. She grabs the microphone again and tells her sister, Come on, you have to make yourself sound better. There are lots of good-looking doctors here. Don't you get what you've done wrong? Suddenly, something big happened. A woman named Emily Nichols, who's 29 years old and works a regular job, spoke up. She's not particularly striking in looks, just ordinary. But she has one interesting thing about her. She became a lawyer after finishing middle school. Emily has a sister named Jessica, who's two years younger. Jessica is pretty and outgoing, so their family always favored her. Emily, unlike Jessica, isn't noticed much. She's just average in looks and style. Plus, she's not very charming, so she didn't get much love from her family or relatives. At home, she felt ignored and often got treated coldly. She couldn't compete with Jessica's natural charm, which got all the attention from their parents. Instead of love, Emily got harsh treatment. I tried really hard in school, hoping my family would notice me even just a little bit. But no matter how well I did, I could never beat my sister. Eventually, I got tired of trying so hard to be loved by my family. I decided to focus on something else instead of seeking their affection. I threw myself into studying, telling myself I'd find my own value. Studying hard made me feel more sure of myself, and I started to see good results. I hoped that one day, my parents would praise me for my academic achievements, so I kept studying late into the night during middle school. I always got the highest grades in my class and did better than everyone else in tests but my parents never praised me. Instead, they seemed disappointed if I didn't get almost perfect scores in every subject. They'd say things like, being at the top isn't enough. You need to be perfect in everything. Even if I got a 95% in a tough test, they'd still say it wasn't good enough. My mom's voice was like ice, sharp, and cold. She always had something to say about my grades, making excuses feel useless. Are you trying to show off these less than perfect grades? she'd say, making me feel small. All I could do was mumble an apology. Yes, I'm sorry, I'd say quietly. No matter how hard I tried, my grades never seemed good enough for my parents. They never appreciated my efforts. If I didn't get a perfect score, they'd scold me. But what hurt more than their coldness was when my sister Jessica said seemingly innocent things. Oh, are you getting in trouble again? She'd say, barging into my room and smirking at my report card. Getting scolded even with good grades? That's sad. I get praise even for barely passing. Then she pretend to be concerned, saying, I thought you were feeling down. But I guess I was wrong. If you were really worried, you wouldn't talk to me like that. That was my report card, I said. See, that's your problem. You're always so standoffish. That's why mom and dad don't show you love. It's because of that, Jessica replied, her eyes cold and full of contempt. Even as she walked away, I could still feel her disdain. After she left, I heard her cheerful laughter with our parents from the living room. I should have been used to this by now, but I couldn't stop the sadness that welled up inside me. Tears streamed down my face. In my hand was my report card, now crumpled from my tight grip. I made a new resolve to stand on my own and escape this suffocating family environment. I decided that excelling in my studies and improving my abilities was the key to my freedom. From that moment on, I promised myself I would make it happen. I threw myself into my studies with even more determination than before. One day, as the autumn breeze blew through the classroom windows, my father made an unexpected announcement. Emily, you will not go to high school. You need to start looking for a job immediately, he said coldly. I was shocked and didn't know what to say. Why would you say that? I asked, trying to hide my confusion. My father replied, It's not worth investing more in you. If you want to go to high school, you'll have to pay for it yourself. If you can't do that, you'll have to give up. But I'm still in middle school. I can't get a job that pays enough. How am I supposed to? I tried to argue, but he wouldn't listen. 
then you'll just have to accept it. Your mother and I have decided to focus our finances on Jessica. We can't afford to spend more on you, he said firmly. That's not fair. I screamed internally, but my father's decision was final. His harsh words seemed to drain all the color from my world, turning everything gray. My mother and sister watched me with unhidden smiles, clearly pleased. Now, I understand there were options to cover high school expenses, like finding schools with tuition waivers or scholarships. But back then, I didn't know about these options, and I felt devastated by the end of my educational path. From that day, my passion for learning faded quickly. The praise from my homeroom teacher, who admired my grades, felt empty. With no support for my education at home, my hopes of continuing my studies seemed impossible. After middle school, I started working at a local factory. I wasn't old enough to live on my home, so I worked hard until I turned 18. Most of my salary went to the household, and I saved the small amount I kept for myself. Those days were tough, like crawling through an endless tunnel. On my 18th birthday, I finally left that house. I left a single letter for my family and, with a firm decision in my heart, walked away from the home that was now just a memory. After I left, it was as if I never existed to my family. They didn't call or write. At first, living away from them was painful, and I felt very lonely. But over time, work kept me busy, and the loneliness faded. Living independently, the stress from home disappeared, and I felt a new sense of mental freedom. This peace of mind reignited my enthusiasm. I regained my love for learning and decided to start studying again. I began with the basics, reviewing diligently. The joy of learning filled my heart once more, and soon I was studying with ease. I moved on to high school textbooks and started reading extensively. During my reading journey, I became fascinated by books on law, which sparked a deep interest in the legal profession. Although I had only finished junior high, the idea of becoming a lawyer seemed far-fetched. But then I learned about the preliminary examination system, which opened up new possibilities for me. This system offered a chance for someone with my educational background to take the bar exam. Armed with this new information, I intensified my dedication to studying. I used every possible moment at home and during breaks at work to memorize legal terms. During lunch, I would eat while studying for the bar exam. My workplace was full of older colleagues, most around my parents' age. They noticed my efforts and came together to support me. At the age of 23, I passed the bar exam. After that, I left my long-term job at the factory and got a position at a top law firm. After about four years of training there, I opened my own law practice. Now, I am a legal consultant for a hospital and I feel content. Yet sometimes, I wonder how my parents would react if they knew I became a lawyer. I think about whether I would finally meet their expectations. Despite this, I have not shared anything with them. In my heart, I believe I will continue not to reach out to them. However, an unexpected reunion with my family came sooner than I anticipated. One evening after work, I came home to find a message on my phone from my younger sister Jessica saying she was getting married. Jessica is getting married, I murmured to myself. My sister, now 27, was engaged to a doctor. The notification said her wedding was next month, and they wanted me to attend. Despite the long period of estrangement from Jessica and my parents, I hesitated to meet them. But as a family member, I couldn't ignore the significant event. So I replied that I would attend. My sister quickly responded with the exact date and location of the ceremony. Her message ended with, Don't forget the wedding gift, which made me smile wryly. It seemed Jessica was more interested in the gift than in wholeheartedly welcoming me. I decided to use the wedding as an opportunity to reunite with the family and then part ways again. On the day of Jessica's wedding, I, Donna, carefully chose a blue dress and headed to the venue. After completing the entrance formalities, I took my seat in the family area where my father and mother were already seated. You have some nerve showing up here. You must be doing well for yourself with the meager earnings from the factory, my father said coldly. Indeed, you're right. Introducing someone like her as family does not do us any credit as parents, my mother added disdainfully. Jessica shouldn't have invited someone like you, my father continued. I told them exactly that, but they insisted on receiving the celebration money regardless, my mother said quietly, right in front of me. They continued their conversation without hesitation, ignoring my presence. This was my reality. I had a faint hope that sharing my side of the story might bridge the gap between my family and me, but it was quickly shattered. Both my father and mother avoided talking to me completely. 
In a silence, I glance around the venue and notice some familiar faces on the groom's side. Haven't I seen that person somewhere before? I wondered, feeling a sense of deja vu. As I tried to remember, I looked up the groom's name, and my suspicion turned into certainty. The connection I had anticipated became clear, and I couldn't entirely hide my surprise. It felt like a twist of fate. However, I decided to keep my emotions in check and quietly participate in the ceremony. As the program proceeded, the bride and groom made a glamorous entrance, followed by his team. Guests offered warm words and entertaining performances, softening the atmosphere. Time passed, and the banquet gradually shifted to dinner and then to photo-taking sessions. Throughout this time, my parents got up without acknowledging my presence and moved towards the front where the bride and groom awaited. Jessica, like a magnet, clung close to them, smiling happily in each photograph taken. I pretended not to feel anything and focused silently on the meal in front of me. But unexpectedly, my sister Jessica approached me. She came closer with a smile, but her eyes had a spark of something more than excitement to see her sister after so many years. It seemed like she had an ulterior motive. Big sis, it's been such a long time, hasn't it? Are you happy to spend time together like this? She asked lightly. I nodded quietly, expressing my genuine thoughts. Yes, the banquet food is really wonderful. I replied with a sarcastic smile. Jessica continued, You can't get such luxurious food at the factory you work at, can you? You should be grateful for this opportunity. Something inside me felt like it was being torn apart, but I didn't show it on my face. Jessica's words grew sharper, cutting into me with a taunting edge. Oh dear, did I upset you? I'm sorry, but it's natural for you to be envious, isn't it? Your little sister marrying a doctor and all. The phrase I'm sorry slipped from her mouth flippantly, as if it were a meaningless ornament. I kept my expression unchanged and quietly waited for her next move. Then Jessica whispered in my ear, Big sis, because I feel sorry for you, I've come up with a great idea. Despite maintaining my composure, I asked with suspicion, A great idea. What is it? Jessica replied with satisfaction, You'll see, just watch closely. Adorned in her elegant wedding dress, she gathered the attention of everyone around as she received a microphone from the staff. Suddenly, she announced loudly to the guests, Ladies and gentlemen, you may not be aware, but my sister is here. She may not have the highest education or be the youngest, but if there is anyone kind-hearted enough, could you please take her under your wing? My face turned red in an instant. What are you saying, Jessica? I exclaimed, unable to hide my shock and embarrassment. I exclaimed, Jessica continued even louder, although she doesn't earn much and leads a modest life. Is there someone here who can brighten my sister's future? As everyone's attention focused on me, Jessica seemed to be relishing my confusion, sporting a smug smile. Then, something unbelievable happened. Jessica's disrespectful behavior escalated, and shockingly, even our usually gentle parents joined in. Please treat her kindly, their careless comment was the last straw for me. Rage surged inside me. How far will they go to satisfy their desire to ridicule someone? especially at a moment of happiness, I couldn't believe it, but it was time for them to face reality. As the atmosphere in the venue shifted and murmurs grew, Jessica, unaware she was once again the center of attention, cheerfully took the microphone, calling out, Emily, look, there are so many doctors gathered here. It's your chance. I remained silent, but my solemn gaze conveyed a strong will. This is the end for you, I thought. Jessica, confused, could only respond with, Heh. I approached her calmly, saying, you'll understand soon just how terrible your actions have been. As Jessica tried to make an excuse, the groom suddenly raised his voice to address the venue. Wait, please. Why are you leaving your seats? His voice captivated everyone. Looking towards him, it was clear that all his colleagues from work were standing up, heading for the exit. Even as the groom tried to stop them, a dignified man who seemed to be the hospital director spoke to him firmly. The recent remarks of the bride were so unpleasant that I'm in disbelief. I apologize, but we can no longer stay here. We will take our leave now. The groom rushed to stop the hospital director, offering to take responsibility for Jessica's words and actions. Please wait. I admit her words were inappropriate. I'll speak to her directly and ensure she undergoes a serious change in awareness. However, the hospital director explained the seriousness of the situation and revealed information about me that the groom was unaware of. 
The problem isn't just that. Do you know what kind of person her sister is? The groom, confused, admitted he knew nothing about me. Eh? No, I only met her sister for the first time today, and all I've heard was that she worked in a factory after graduating from middle school. The hospital director couldn't hide his irritation at the groom's ignorance. Don't be ridiculous. Her sister is a respected lawyer and also serves as the legal advisor to our hospital. The groom was shocked to learn this, indicating he had no idea I was the hospital's legal advisor. The lawyer is our hospital's advisor. Not only the groom but also my sister, parents, and other guests were left speechless. I was contracted as the legal advisor to that hospital, which was where my sister's future husband worked. The reason the groom looked familiar was because I had seen him several times at hospital events. Other guests likely realized this too when they saw me. My sister's inappropriate comments only made things worse, prompting the hospital director to openly express his outrage. Although the groom himself is a member of the hospital's medical staff and has no direct relation to me, to the hospital director and other staff, the legal advisor is of significant importance. The groom's face turned even redder and he stepped toward his sister, raising his voice in reproach. What on earth is this? Because of your carelessness, my reputation is now tarnished. The groom reproached Jessica, his tone filled with indignation. Jessica stumbled over her words for a moment, then defended herself like a bewildered child. It's not like that. I truly had no idea that my sister was in such a prestigious position. Growing more indignant, the groom continued to chastise Jessica for her ignorance. Ignorance is no excuse, and how can you speak so lightly and disrespectfully of your own sister? As a human being, your behavior is at the very bottom. You've truly lost sight of what's valuable. Desperately trying to elicit some understanding, Jessica pleaded, Wait a minute, listen. I have a good reason. However, the groom, unwilling to hear her explanation, declared decisively, The withdrawal from the marriage itself. I have no interest in hearing your excuses. Our marriage discussion ends here. Shocked by his words, Jessica collapsed on the spot as if her soul had left her, her complexion turning deathly pale. Then, in a fit of anger, the groom and the guests disappeared from the wedding hall. As I was about to leave, I heard a desperate cry from my sister behind me. Please help me, Emily. But I didn't let her cries sway me. Confronting her with a stern tone, I said, Help you, you say. Why should I do such a thing for you? The situation you're in now is the result of your own actions. Trying to get a laugh with a joke that mocks others and then playing the victim when it fails is pathetic. I can't accept it. Jessica, confused and anxious, pleaded. Why are you being so harsh? If you had known about my success as a lawyer, I replied calmly but firmly, why didn't you bother to contact me? In fact, I was planning to end our relationship after this wedding, but seeing your unfortunate end, I'm somewhat satisfied. You must be disappointed that your engagement to a doctor has been called off. Well, you better work hard to find your next prospect. With those words, I left the venue with dignity. From afar, I could hear the critical voices of my sister and parents. Everything went as expected, and my sister's marriage was no more. The parents, who had believed a secure future was guaranteed through my sister marrying a doctor, expressed their anger towards her for the first time. Amidst the chaos, my sister, always pampered, couldn't bear their anger and sought solace with a broken heart. But I turned a blind eye to her pleas, devoid of sympathy. I never answered her calls, despite her repeated attempts, and I cut off all contact with the family. I heard that my sister had quit her job, now unemployed, estranged from our parents, and spending her days isolated at home. As for me, I am enjoying a very satisfying life both professionally and personally leading a peaceful existence without major problems. Although my relationship with my family has been rocky, I am grateful for the strong support I receive from colleagues and friends. This contented life isn't just luck, it's the result of years of self-improvement and hard work. There were challenging days, but overcoming each obstacle has brought me to where I am today. Reflecting on my past struggles and their impact on my growth, I aspire to continue living a fulfilling life at my own pace setting achievable goals while minimizing stress.